All right, guys, so I'm going to start by showing you how the XR controller works by running it in Unity. So let's go ahead and hit play. Alright guys, so that's a demo of how the VR controller, I know it was quite long, but I had a lot of fun building that. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the scene and see how it looks. And then we're going to be jumping into the player controller and seeing how it works. I'm also going to be putting that in GitHub at some point, I think about a week or two. And right now it's going to be available in Patreon. So if you want to, you know, get it from Patreon, I'm going to make it available tonight. So. The first thing that I needed to do is I needed to build this scene, right? So I use ProBuilder to build the scene by using, you know, primary shapes and, and different options in here that they have. So I'm just going to, you know, you can watch other videos about that in my in my YouTube. The, the other thing that I also wanted to do is I also wanted to have, you know, not only things that were, you know, falling and just, you know, have physics on themselves, I also wanted to interact with some objects. So like these spheres, they all have rigid bodies and they have 0.1 on the actual mass. The other things that I wanted to do as well was to be able to grab spheres and these ones right here, they all have XR grab interactables and that's why I can grab them, I can throw them, I can do a lot more with them. They also have physics, which allows me to, you know, push them around and it has some issues with the player controller because the player controller itself it's also made out of physics because I can also jump just to make it more realistic. I also have stairs. I also have some walls. I also have the giant sphere that you saw that I actually threw and I almost fell through the, through the cliff right there. And then, you know, a few stairs and, and just, just a cool, a cool little environment that I was able to create. I also add a couple of things in here that I can jump through and then a little bit of a tunnel here so that I can go through and look at the shadows. So, just very basic, I just, you know, wanted to experiment with it. What I want to show you is I want to show you how the player controller works and what components are required for this player controller. So you can look at the XR rig. I show you 
a video about how to add an extra rig. So make sure you watch that. I'm going to put it in the description of this video so you can watch the entire playlist. I also have a locomotion system. I also have a snap turn provider, which is the one that you saw in the video that allows me to turn every 4,500, every 45 degrees, not 4,500, 45 degrees. And then it also has a dead zone and also an activation timeout. You can change those if you like. And I'm using the primary to the access to be able to, to control that. I also needed to specify which control was going to be doing the snap turn. So you have to specify that by incrementing the size of the controller. And I specified that my right hand one was going to be the one managing that. And the other piece on here, like if you look at the player controller, I also have a, another component on the very bottom, which is called the XR player controller. And just know that this is just the beginning of this controller. I'm going to be adding a lot of different things to the controller. Right now, the only thing that you can do is you can just run around, you can jump. I also can specify which controller is going to be able to, to actually move these, this character. And then it also allows you to jump multiple times. So if you don't check this, it's going to allow you to just keep jumping just, just to basically mimic like if you were flying. I just wanted to do something different because I just thought that it was fun to do that. And you can also specify, like I said, which node, if you want to use the right hand to control this, then you can do that, or the left hand. Also, jump force and a speed. And then also the capsule collider. That's I wanted to do that because I wanted to be, basically be able to push the spheres and, and have more physics. And because it just makes it fun whenever you add physics to the game. So that is going to be that. I'm also going to be showing you the code. And you can, you know, you can copy the code if you like. I mean, that, that's going to be the goal for this, just to be able to show you how the player controller works. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And I'm just going to give you more of a code review. So the first thing that I'm requiring in this component, it's going to be a rigid body and also a capsule collider. The reason for the rigid body is so that I can apply realistic force whenever I want to do a jump. I also have a serializable for the speed, also serializable for jump force. This one detects, it's an XR node, it detects whether I'm using the left hand or the right hand. I also wanted to add a property so that it can, if I wanted to jump multiple times, I could jump multiple times. So this one, will, what it will do is basically doesn't check for the ground. So it'll just keep jumping and jumping like if you were flying. I also needed to specify the capsule default. And these are some of the settings for that. I also wanted to specify, you know, I needed to capture the input device. So this is how I do it. I create an instance of the input device and I'll show you the other settings. I also needed a property to detect whether it was grounded or not. So I'm using this is grounded for that. Also, whether I'm pressing the button when I'm doing the jump. So I have this button press Boolean. I needed to get a reference for the rigid body component, the capsule collider, a list of input devices, and then also the capsule direction. This one is so that I can, you know, detect where, whether I'm going to be doing the capsule. The capsule is going to be on, a X, on the X axis, the Y axis or the Z axis. The other things that I do is as soon as this gets enabled, I get the rigid body component. I also get the capsule collider component. I change the constraints because I don't want to allow any rotation on the, uh, at least on this implementation for the rigid body. I also change the direction of the ca capsule just based on what they are setting right here. So by default, it's set to the Y axis and that makes sense to me. It kind of looks like the one for the character controller. And then I also just set the radio center and height. So the first thing that happens is I get the device, right? We want to make sure that we get the device. So I pass in the controller now. This is going to be either the left hand or the right hand. Then I tell it, OK, give me, give me a list of devices that you currently have by calling the input devices, get devices at XR node. Then I get the controller. I just use link to basically get me the first controller. And that gets set to this instance. Then on the update method, I make sure that the controller is set. If it hasn't been set, I call that method again. The reason why I did this is because let's say that the controller is not visible the, or, or actually doesn't get detected on enable. Then I want to make sure that I detect it as soon as it gets connected. So I just check, OK, if the controller is no, then I'm going to try to get it again. If it's not no, then you know I shouldn't call that, that method anymore. And then I have two different methods for movement and one for jump. These are actually pretty straightforward. I detect, I first get a vector 2 of the primary 2D value. I use the import feature usage by calling you know, the, the actual generic, passing a vector to the primary to the vector. I say, OK, I want to I want to basically use the the primary to the vector from the primary to the axis. So if you look at these common usages, it, there's a lot of different things in there that you can use. You can get, you know, you can get the index touch. You can get the primary button, the primary touch. So these are just different features that you can get from the controller, different values. 
So in my case, I just needed a primary to the access. So that's what I'm declaring here. And then I just say, okay, controller, can you give me that feature? And I want to know the value of that feature. If that feature is not zero, that means that somebody's actually changing the value of that feature, which in my case, if I'm moving to the left or if I'm moving to the right, that feature is going to have a value greater than zero or negative than zero. Because you can go, you know, if we're going to a negative axis, x axis or, or a negative z axis, then in that case, that value won't be zero. It would be a negative number or it would be a positive number. So I get the, I multiply the speed by the value of x and I also use delta time so that we can do a smooth movement. And I do the same thing with the y axis because we want to move forward, we want to move to the left and right. Then I use the transform, transform direction that right because I wanted to make sure that I was compensating for the rotation. So if I am rotating and let's say that I do the snap turn, this code is going to handle that. It's going to always make sure that you are rotating and you make sure that it always facing, you know, in the right direction. So I change the position based on the right and multiply by the x-axis and also based on the forward direction and multiply by the c-axis. So this will take care of the movement. So if we're moving to the left or if we're moving to the right, if we're moving forward, if we're moving backwards, that's what the code, that's what that code is going to do. And then the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to jump, right? We wanted to, we wanted to jump whenever we're making games. So I first need to check to make sure that we're grounded. So to do that, I'm using the physics ray cast. I get the position, the current position of this character. And then on the X axis and also the Y axis, I offset it a little bit because I wanted to make sure that we were, you know, starting from above the character. And then I just, I do a, a ray cast down. And this is going to allow me to specify the maximum distance of the ray cast. So I set it to five. And then I just have a draw ray to basically for debugging purposes. So the other thing that I also check is to make sure that we're, we're grounded. If we're not grounded, I'm going to return. I'm not going to allow you to jump. However, if I have the option check, I'm always going to allow you to jump. That way we can mimic flying. So the next thing that I do is I declare a Boolean value for basically the state of the button. I call the controller, try get feature. This is going to give me, you know, whether it's true or false. And then I'm going to get the value back. And if the value is true, meaning that I'm pressing that button, I'm going to check, okay, if the button is not currently being pressed, I'm going to set it to true. I'm going to apply the force. And then the only way that we're going to get in here is if we're not currently, you know, getting getting a true state on the primary, primary button, which means that I release that button and then I'm just going to set the button press to false. So this is going to allow me to basically press it and then jump and then press it again and jump again. So that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you on this video. If you guys have any questions about this or anything else, let me know. And also know that I'm going to be putting this in Patreon tonight as soon as we, as soon as I finish, you know, editing the video. Thank you guys.